Okay, so we very briefly looked at um, exposure and white balance, uh, and then under the basic um, part, the basic section of RAW Editor, I've also got some contrast highlights, shadows, whites, and black sliders. These are going to control the tonal range within the image. Again, a lot of this is, I think you'll probably find incredibly easy and straightforward. You're used to doing this sort of thing on Instagram already. Um, so contrast will increase or decrease the amount of difference between shadows and the highlights and the amount of difference between colors as well. If I increase my contrast, um, we see uh, a much more pronounced difference between shadows and highlights. If I decrease it, we soften that off. Um, always remember, useful little double click to flatten it off. Now, as a general principle, be gentle with your sliders. It's very easy to go too far. Um, for me, at first glance, I might think this looks okay, but I think there's actually much more contrast in there than needs to be. So do be gentle with them. Don't overcook your editing. But also, I would strongly recommend not even using contrast. Why use one slider that can that's just going to blanketly turn the shadows up and the highlights up um, when you've got different sliders that allows you to control them individually. So I always prefer, and I think most professional photo editors would agree, to use highlights, shadows, whites, and blacks, and essentially ignore that contrast slider. Um, let me give you an example. If I increase the blacks here by bringing this slider this way, we're getting a really strong shadow on the, this woman's chin. Um, I don't want too much shadow, but I do want to increase contrast a little bit. So if I bring my shadows actually up and soften them off a bit, but my blacks down, then I'm actually getting a bit more contrast without um, overemphasizing that shadow on the, the chin. A very, very good, very important way to see how your editing is looking is a side-by-side -side comparison. And this is where just pressing the letter Q on your keypad is really, really useful. Because um, I can now see each, um, I can see the before and the after side by side. I can actually toggle with Q through a few different comparison modes, um, but I'm going to stick with this one for now. So it's not a huge difference, I know, um, but I have just brought a little bit more contrast into the image without overemphasizing that shadow under the chin by actually bringing my shadows up my blacks down again i can now look at my highlights and see if i bring those up or down what's happening to my image i'm finding actually that um just a little touch more highlights i think i like and then finally i've got my whites now, I don't think I really want to move the whites. I think they're okay where they are because when I'm moving them right, I'm getting far too much exposure. And when I'm bringing them down, turn, sort of knocking the tops off those whites altogether, it's it's not really working for me. So I'm, I'm actually going to leave them just slightly down. So to adjust the tonal range in the image, Ignore the contrast and exposure sliders as much as you can, and instead work with highlights, shadows, whites, and blacks.